Hello everyone, Dr. Ray Marquez here of Back Pain Relief Center, and this is my first episode of your local back pain consultant. So what I'm gonna to try to do here is just give some uh, information out about neck and back pain and uh, your different treatment options to get you through it, to manage it, to relieve the pain. Um, I'm not sure how many of these I'll do. Maybe I'll do one a week, maybe I'll do one every day. I guess it depends on if I'm getting some good information out there to everyone. And the different things that I'll be doing is just going over different cases or at least unique cases that we see in our offices and uh, go through them and see if it can help you. And what I mean by help you is maybe give you the right information or the right track to go in order to get yourself fixed up. Um, if you don't have neck or back pain, this channel probably won't be of any interest to you. But maybe a family member or a friend um, is in some pain and maybe it'll help them. So first, just a little bit about me. Uh, I've been practicing for you know about 17 years or so and I've helped many, many people with their neck and back pain. Uh, I have two offices. I have one in Vineland, New Jersey and one in uh, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. I know that sounds a little odd. It's just kind of how life has led me. Our office in South Jersey is doing extremely well and busy and we're helping a lot of people. We have Dr. Stacy Baking up here too and she's helping quite a few people. Um, just kind of life choice, my family and I uh, wanted to move down south. Um, we ended up opening a clinic there and um, that's doing well now. We're helping some people down there also. So I know it's a little of a bit of a unique situation, but I'm in New Jersey on Wednesdays and Thursdays all day long, 8.30 to 6, um, helping as many people as I can uh, with the aid of Dr. Bacon. She's also here on Mondays and Tuesdays. We are a walk-in, no appointment needed clinic. We're here to make it convenient, affordable, and easy for you to get out of pain as quickly as possible. What's unique about our clinic is we understand that we can't help everyone. For a lot of people, chiropractic is, is a godsend. It is the best thing that has happened to them. We relieve their pain, we get them back on the road to functioning and feeling better, and they're great. For some other people, it just may not, not be. Uh, some people, it may even aggravate a little bit in the beginning, and we do need the aid of other physicians to help them manage or relieve their pain. So we have a close network of other doctors, including medical doctors, osteopathic doctors, orthopedics, rheumatologists. Um, good network of doctors that we refer to to help you get through your pain. What else here? So I'm going to be call, talking about different cases. If you're a patient of mine, don't worry. I'm not going to use any names or, or precise uh, information about anyone. I'll call it kind of all be general because a lot of people are suffering from the same types of pains. So maybe this information helps you, I hope, I hope it does. Okay, so first off, we had a case in the other day, and this is a personal injury case, meaning someone got in an accident. And I see it time and time again where cases just get mismanaged, where for whatever reason, whatever doctors or physicians or groups saw these patients in the beginning, they didn't follow up with them, they didn't get them to the correct doctors, and people are kind of just left in limbo. We see it again and again. All right, so, what do I want to say here? One of the things that we do well here is that we help patients manage their pain and manage their conditions to get them better quickly, meaning we're going to get them to all the necessary doctors to get this thing straightened out. So here we go. This, uh, this family got into an accident. They were rear-ended. It happens all the time. More and more people just aren't paying attention and um, people are getting some serious injuries. So they got rear-ended bad enough where they needed to go to the emergency room uh, by ambulance. Um, both complaining of neck and back pain and um, were a little nervous about what was going on. So they get to the emergency room and like most emergency rooms, everyone's waiting for a long time. And um, they get in there and they finally get some tests done. When all the tests are done, they're really kind of in limbo of what needs to be done. So for instance, the one patient, you know, they did uh, CTs or CAT scans. They took some x-rays. Um, they looked at everything but didn't really go over it with the patient. They say, oh, you're okay. It's probably just a soft tissue injury. An emergency room's job is to make sure, number one, you're not going to die. Number two, you're not bleeding. Number three, nothing's broke and nothing's in immediate danger. And then they're going to refer you out to other physicians. But sometimes that's a gray area and it doesn't always get there as quickly as they should. So the patients have all these tests done and they kind of send them home, they get up the next day and they're not really sure what to go. So they kind of just take the medication that they were given and they're hoping, I guess, to start feeling better. A few weeks goes by 
and they don't feel better. Actually, more things start popping up. So start having a little bit of knee pain, start getting some headaches, uh, the neck and back are starting to hurt more, and they're wondering why, because they went to the ER and they said they're okay. Well, that's not always the case, because sometimes there's some underlying issues like soft tissue injuries, some prior uh, degenerative disorders that are now exacerbated or feeling worse, and now this accident has aggravated everything. So they actually saw me on social media. Um, we spoke a little bit on Facebook. Um, and just a side note, if you're seeing this, you can always message me on Facebook, we'll talk. Um, I'm really accessible to everyone. So she comes on in and we find out that uh, the accident was a few weeks ago and she hasn't seen, or they both haven't seen anyone yet. So what needs to be done? Well, first um, we get all the records from the ER. We find out what's going on. I review everything. We took some more imaging, meaning we took some more x-rays to see uh, exactly what's going on, stuff that they wasn't covered at the ER. And um, we do a full orthopedic neurological exam, and we establish a base case and see exactly where we're at. Now, with these patients, they needed to, we need to bring on more physicians. Sometimes when you get in an accident, your pain levels are so high, it's difficult for us to do some therapy on you because everything we do uh, hurts you. So... The first things first, we discussed their case. Um, we did some therapy on them in the office, real light, get, them, uh, get everything rolling. The next thing we did is got them in with one of our medical doctors that we refer to because at times medicine is completely appropriate. So with these patients, I believe that we needed to get some inflammation down, get some pain levels down so they can better handle uh, the therapy. So what we did was refer them to our medical doctor. So they should be getting in there today or tomorrow. And then we set them up on a care plan. One of the people in the accident had uh, an additional leg problem. And that leg problem, I'm not sure really what's going on in there. And it's not my specialty. I'm more, I'm a spine doctor. I focus on the back. Um, we do help some extremity joints. But this one here, I want to get a clear picture of what's going on. So we're going to refer to an orthopedic. Also in her picture, we most likely will have to refer over to a neurologist and um, get some more tests on to see exactly what's going on. So what we're doing is managing that case. So number one, I'm going to handle the therapy on them. Number two, we'll get them over to the medical doctors. Number one, for pain levels. Two, for an orthopedic to make sure everything's working correctly. And possibly a neurologist to make sure that we don't have any neurological deficit. So many times when it comes to neck and back pain, we need a group of doctors to help you feel better and make sure that we're doing all the right things. Um, one more additional thing with this thing. So the, the big takeaway that with personal injury, if you go to an ER and they say everything's fine and you're still feeling things, make sure that you get back in to see me uh, this way. We can go over everything, get you to all the proper doctors, make sure that you're going to recover fully from this. The next thing with personal injury cases, and this is uh, for New Jersey, not so much for South Carolina, but we still follow the same protocol. In New Jersey, they have a thing called the uh, New Jersey Care Path Guidelines. And there are guidelines that were established by, I'm not sure, I guess the state or somebody. And they're saying they would like you to do certain things, meaning the doctors, in, in a particular way in order for them to pay for all your bills. And what I mean is we all have uh, personal injury protection or med pay on our car insurances to take care of our injuries that we sustain, whether we're at fault or at fault in these accidents. And the care path guidelines say you can go to an ER after the ER, they want you to see a medical doctor, and then they want you to start some therapy. So take some medicine, do some therapy for a month. If after that month you are still feeling some discomfort, at that time they'll approve imaging, meaning more x-rays, um, MRI, CTs, um, specialized tests such as EMGs, things like that. And then they want you to start seeing specialists, meaning a neurologist, an orthopedic, a rheumatologist, whoever we may need to get you um, feeling better. And with these guidelines, we follow them as, as closely as possible because when they're not done correctly, then the insurance companies give us a little bit of a hard time. We have to send more notes in. We may have to appeal it. They may get denied. And it starts a process that makes it difficult for the patients to get their care taken care of. So the New Jersey Care Path guidelines, we have to try to stick to as best we can. So again, the big takeaway with this case and what I saw was they went to the ER. They weren't managed correctly or at least in my opinion, they weren't managed correctly. Um, I think they needed more specialists to get them to feel better. 
so if you've been in an accident and you go to the ER and they uh, say everything's all right and you're not sure about that, um, call me, message me, stop in, and I'll give you a free consultation and we'll push you back on that road to feeling better. Okay, so I hope that helps you a little bit. If anyone out there has been in an accident, again, you can always message me, email me, uh, give us a call at the office. I hope that helps. Um, we'll come back and talk to you again on episode two. I hope all is well. Um, we're at the end of the year now. I hope everyone has a, uh, a great New Year's Eve, great start to the New Year. It's going to be prosperous and um, fulfilling. So everyone have a great day, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.